Hi, and welcome to this video where we are building together a simple content management system for individuals in Notion. And this content management system is going to be a pipeline where we can keep track of our content across social media platforms or blog posts. Status by status from idea all the way to publication. And we will do so by building a Notion database. So let's get started from scratch. And here you can see on the screen, I have an empty page that I just created and it's called Notion CMS. I set the text to small just to have more visibility. And now I'm going to choose table because the first thing that we're going to do is we are building the database structure. And so all the properties that we need to input here. And secondarily, we will turn this database into a board view to see that pipeline grouping content by status. But first, let's start with a table and let's give this database an icon. So this is going to be the ice icon and a cover that we can pick from Unsplash. Now, let's begin building the system. And I already have some properties in mind that are at the very foundation of content management. But of course, the system that you would use depends highly on your specific needs. And this system is meant to be a very foundational content management system to track ideas and to get started with a CMS all in one place. So let's rename the first column in the first place with then so the three dots and unwrap cells. Now open a page so that we can see all the properties vertically and we have more space to work with them. So the first property would be a status because we need a status to keep track of where the content is, at what stage it is in the pipeline. And to have a board view, we need a status. So status will be a select property, which allows to select only one status at a time. And so the status might be ready to start. And we can change the color of each status just by clicking on the three dots and then selecting a new color. But for now, let's leave them like so. Because on this video, we're going to focus on the building part rather than the aesthetic. So second of all, we will need a property to keep track of which platforms this content is published to. And it might be one or multiple platforms. So let's call this one platform. And it's going to be a multi-select where we can add some predefined channels that we usually use. So one possible platform can be blog second. So for the sake of this example, let's say we have these four platforms, blog, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Having a multi-select property allows us to select multiple platforms at a time, because sometimes we might publish a blog post, but break it down into sub posts that we published on Twitter. And so we can choose blog and Twitter in such a case. Let's have a post date. The post date is the publication date, the date on which you intend to publish that post. And it's going to be a date property. Then let's keep going with dates and let's keep track of when was the last time that this post was updated. And we can do so via the last update property in the advanced section and it's going to be last edited time. Next up, we might have a caption social media content especially and that's a text type so let's move it right here and next up we can have a property for graphic assets so here we can upload images or videos that we have for that specific content it's going to be a files and media type and here we can upload one or multiple files or even embed links in addition, we can keep track of the final URL of the post via a URL property type, where you can paste the final link to the content. 
If you collaborate with other individuals, let's say for example to edit your videos, you can add a person property for the editor, as an example, for the writer. But that's more suitable for team-wide content management systems. However, let me show you, for example, if you collaborated with an editor, you can add a new property that's called editor. The property type would be person. And from here, you will be able to select the editor and assign the content to that editor if you invite them to your Notion workspace. Because this property only pulls users from your Notion workspace, whether members or guests. And this looks like a good structure to start with for a generic content management system. Now let's go back to the master database here and create the board view that we need. Add a view, it's gonna be board. And then let's move this view up top, like so. And now you see that the board already grouped content by status. And the first column is not status, but we don't really need to see this. So we can hide it, three dots, hide. The second thing that I usually like to do is color columns instead of having this white background because it gives more livelihood to this page in my view. And so I go to group and then color. And here you can also adjust the statuses and their position in the pipeline. Next up, let's make sure that we only show the properties that we want on the cards appearing here. And so we go to properties Let's hide all and select the ones that we want to see. So platform and post date. So whenever we have a card here, the platform and the publication date will be shown on the card itself. And so that's the basic pipeline. And from here, when we create a new content, we can then work to see the whole structure from a bird's eye view perspective and then we can drag and drop content around based on the status and the advancement of our content. And so from ready to start to in progress draft editing until publication. And I would add a sort to this database that sorts content by post date ascending. And this means that the most recently published content would go at the very bottom of the published column here, because the sort is dependent on the post date. Whenever you want to change a status, you can also do so directly from the pipeline here. You can just click on the name and then change it. Now, let's keep statuses as they are. One thing that's missing from this database is a template. And I think for a content management system, especially if you have a clear system in mind and a workflow that you follow for creating content for specific platforms, a template is very useful because we can create a predefined structure and steps to follow in order to create content. And let's create a template by going to the drop down menu here on the blue button and then new template. And this is going to be called new blog post. Let's say, for example, we can already choose an icon and the cover if you wish. And the status would be ready to start because when we create a new content and we choose a template, the first status would be ready to start. And then we can change it as we start walking through the pipeline. The platform in this case will always be blog. And sometimes then it will also republish the content into other platforms that you can choose directly on the blog post itself when you create it. And all these other properties are going to be blank and filled out once you use this template for a new blog post. So let's say that you have three stages in the blog post creation. There is research and notes, there is drafts and publication. And, and these three stages are the most important ones that you follow to create a blog post. So we can already create those sections here. H1 to create a heading one or a new section on the page. And this is going to be called research. might have some bullet points or toggles that you can create by typing slash toggle. And the second section would be for drafting. And so that's where after your research stage, you create the actual text and essay. 
So it's going to be h1. This is in here. We also have multiple drafts in multiple pages separated from each other. And so we can create a slash page right here. Let's make small text. Let's give the name a variable that's automatically updated with the name of the new blog post that you create when you select this template. And so we can type at new blog post. And this is going to reflect the name that you give to the blog post once you use this template. And next up, there is going to be a section for publication. And this can particularly be a checklist of items that you follow before publishing a blog post. So you can have maybe add tags. You can create your own checklist in the template itself when you create it, or if you duplicate this content pipeline, you can just go to the three dots here, to the right of the template name, edit, and now you know that you are editing a template from this reminder right here at the top of the page. And if you go here, now all the changes that you make on this page will reflect on the next blog posts that you use the template for. And now we have a fully functional content management system in Notion. It's primarily a pipeline, but we can create additional views of this database to see data in different formats that can inform our decisions for the future based on the past. So right now we have a board view and we also have a table view. This table view, I think, can be adjusted. So first of all, let's see how many entries we have here. And then let's add a sort by status so that ready to pop to start will appear at the top and published will appear at the very bottom of this table. And the second sort can be by post date, which is the publication date that determines the position of a content on this table. And then let's see which property we're gonna show and in what order on this table. So first, the status, that's good. Then maybe the platform is an important one to show first. We have graphics, the post date after the caption, and then maybe we can have the URL or editor URL and last updated. And we can precise columns here as we wish. But now let's create a new view that groups content by platform because this can let us see or visualize how much content we publish on each platform. And so let's duplicate this view. So we want to have a table grouped by platform. Duplicate. Let's call this group platform and then Let's hide no platform. And here we'll see how much content we produced for that platform overall since using this system. And we can collapse each of the platforms here and then open the one that we want to consult at any given time. We can also have a content calendar and that's a pretty fundamental view of a content management system. And this content calendar will show content based on the publication date that we can see an overview of when we published what. Calendar, create by post date, and let's decide which properties we wanna show on each card. We wanna show the platform and the status. And then we sort entries by status. And now we see that the content that we just created appears here based on the publication date. And whenever we open the content, we access the same exact page that we saw earlier. And that's the whole calendar. But the main view of the system is the board view, where the actual work happens and where you can truly understand the status of each piece of content at any given time. And this is powerful because you centralize your content management system in one place 
and you have one board that's the source of truth for how much content you're putting out, how many ideas you have, and which are the statuses of the pieces of content that you intend to publish on your social media channels. This template that we built together will be available in the video description, so you can duplicate it if you want, or you can just follow along and build your own system and craft it around your own needs, because that's ultimately the true power of Notion, the ability to craft the systems around your specific needs, workflows, use case. And whenever you have a new content idea, you will add it to the ready to start section. And then once you start working on something, the card moves to in progress. So you define a clear set of mental models that you use to manage your content and publish it regularly, consistently managing all your content in one place. Thank you for watching and see you soon.